you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. This next one we're going to play is called Kenny Wagner's Surrender, and this is the story of a kind of a general all-around kind of outlaw bad man that lived around, uh, I guess he was, his career was pretty active in the 20s, and he was, um, the, he, he came to Arkansas, and he was arrested there in, uh, in Miller County by the first ever female sheriff named Lily Barber, and uh, anyways, this is the story of, of how all that happened. So this one we're fixing to do doesn't really have a title. We just call it the Tie Hackers Hoedown uh, or Tie Hackers Breakdown. And this one was played um, by the Tie Hackers. And a, a Tie Hacker was somebody that, uh, that hacked an oak log into a railroad tie with, a, with an ax. And uh, back when the railroad was being built <coughs> coming across the west, uh, people lived in camps and and worked in the timber and hacked, hacked oak logs into railroad ties to, to build the railroad as it went along. And of course, there was a lot of, a lot of fiddle music that went on uh, in those camps. And this is one that was, was played back then. And it's always been kind of near and dear to me because you know that was a big part of the, uh, the economy and the culture in the Ozarks back, back uh, years ago. And it still is today. In fact, our family, we, we, I make my living uh, working in the timber 
and I've cut an awful lot of tie logs. Of course, now it's uh, chainsaws and sawmills, but the, 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 you know, it's still a similar type of uh, culture and economy. So I, it's always fun to have music that's, that's old, that's about the way of life, that's, you know, that's still really important and still around. So anyways, we're going to play the Tie Hackers Hoedown for you. sentimental number that was popular in the 1930s called Picture on the Wall.
Okay. Uh, we're going to do a tune. It's called Scott Number One, and I don't know anything about that title, why it's called that, what that means, but it's called Scott Number One, and uh, we learned this. It's pretty, pretty popular, not a real common tune, but it was played around the Missouri Ozarks uh, here and there by, by a couple of fiddlers, and the version that we, were, that we learned that we really liked uh, comes from a recording of a fiddler named Bill Driver, and uh, Bill Driver was a really, a really well-known, well-respected fiddler, really popular at contests and dances. And, and he was a black man, and he lived in, um, it, earlier on in Missouri, there was lots of rural areas where there was a lot of black folks living. And then as time went on, uh, school consolidation really affected those communities because of racism, you know, systemic racism. A lot of the black schools were closed before the white schools were in rural areas. And that forced a lot of the black population into the urban centers like Springfield and, and so on and stuff. And so that really had a big effect on that community. But um, Bill Driver stayed in his, in kind of the areas he was raised in and, and farmed late into life. I think he lived to be like 103 or 104 and most of that time was was still out uh, farming and stuff and a lot of people that lived near him said that um, you know after he was out working in the field all day that he would go home and sit on his front porch and play the fiddle and uh, he was a really energetic fiddler and a, just a good strong loud player and I guess you could hear the music just kind of drifting off through the country late at night and I just I love to think of that you know and I wish I could have could have heard it myself but anyways here's Scott number one <laughs> banjo style of <coughs> three-finger picking <coughs> in uh, northwest Arkansas, and uh, I've, I've been uh, learning a few of the pieces from that older style, um, and so I'm going to play a version of um, uh, what's it called shortening bread from northwest Arkansas. And, and just to I don't know if everybody, we're from the Fayetteville, Arkansas area, and uh, we're really pleased and proud to get to be here in D.C. and, and play for you all, and the, the banjo style that he's fixing to, oh good, well I'm glad you're, glad you're glad to have us. <clears throat> the, the, this, this banjo style he's fixing to play for you is from, the, it was 
was common in the area just kind of on the east side of the county we live in and uh, there's not a lot of recordings of it and we're really lucky that Clark was around um, several of those banjo players back there in the 70s and 80s I guess. Yeah Ernest Scott was the Ernest Scott was, the, was, the, banjo was the banjo player in particular that this one came yeah. from. And I've gone out of tune because of the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, we've been out on the mall all day in the, in the yeah, humidity, and now we're inside in the, in the dry here. So. But it'll just sound more like a banjo if it's out of tune. It's just a Kennedy Center yeah. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> It's called Natchez Under the Hill, but that's the wrong name for it. It's uh, there's I don't know why it's misnamed, but uh, this comes from a, a fiddler from Bush, Arkansas, who was uh, a really old-time type of fiddler. His name was uh, James Madison Walden. Everybody called him Skeeter, and uh, of course we never knew him. But uh, there's there's some really great collection uh, recordings of him at the University of Arkansas Special Collections, which is a wonderful resource for Ozark music. Um, but anyways, uh, Skeeter Walden had a, a lot of really neat tunes that were, that really, to me, sound like real 19th century type of, type of fiddling, and this is one that he plays. It's kind of just an, an odd little square dance type of tune, and uh, he called it Natchez Under the Hill, but that, that's a totally different fiddle tune, and I don't know why. Uh, but anyways, we'll call it Skeeter's Natchez Under the Hill.
going to sing a song called I'm Going Back to Where I Come From, and this is one that I learned from a field recording of Fidella Hogan and Helen Fultz, and they were actually related to um, Ernest Scott, Ernest Scott, who, uh, who Clark learned that banjo piece from. I don't think they ever made any um, commercial recordings, but luckily they made a lot of field recordings that are stored digitally um, at the University of Arkansas Special Collections Archive, which we've mined heavily. <laughs> and, if, and if you all like this kind of music, that's, that's a good place to go is the U of A Special Collections, because that's really getting it right from the horse's mouth. You know, that's mm -hmm. really the, the real thing. There. And yeah, Joshua is here. Yeah, there's Joshua Youngblood right there. He's from Fayetteville. He's a, he works at that special collection, so we got a lot to thank him for for helping put that all together. Yeah. So this song is kind of a novelty number that they probably learned from an old 78 of uh, Carson Robinson playing, yeah, his 1942 recording. I think they changed the gender around to be from the woman's point of view, but it's a fun song. Yeah, and they were sisters, right? And they lived, they lived at like Zion, which is a little community probably like four miles from where I grew up at on the east side of Fayetteville, which back then would have been like a really rural area and now is under like McMansion subdivisions. <laughs> but uh, really pretty countryside, kind of on the edge of, a, of, of an area called the Springfield Plain. And it's where, it's where a, an uneroded part of the Ozark Plateau begins to kind of crumble away into the more Boston Mountain uh, part of the, the, the region. And it's a really, it's a, it's a pretty place that we were, we're really pleased to call home.
Thank you. Uh, this, this next song we're going to do uh, comes from a singer named Fred High uh, from High, Arkansas, population one. Uh, but I sort of think that the census record was inaccurate because I know that his wife also lived there. So maybe it was population two. But um, anyways, so he was kind of an interesting guy. He, he uh, was a ballad singer and just kind of a what they would have called a mountain boomer. And I don't know exactly what that means, but you know, any picture of him, he always had like a rifle and a dog and you know, he was a real, he was a real woodsman kind of guy. But any mountain boomer is someone that, that's got really wealthy and just hoards their money in their bank account. <laughs> that's a different kind of boomer. That's, oh, that's like my mom. <laughs> okay, anyway, <laughs> here we go. It's called Last Night While I Lie Sleeping. <laughs> I dreamed that I was lying down by some violet stream With a pretty gal standing over me She was there to go my bell And I woke up broken hearted in the cold county jail Sweetheart, ten dollars in her hand. Said, Take this, dear Johnny, it's all that I command. May the heavens guide and protect you wherever you may go. And the devil snatch that jewelry that sent you far below. Sherman at about 10 o'clock, his pocket full of jail keys, some doors to unlock, said cheer you up my prisoner, then I thought I heard him say, now you're bound for Nashville for five long years to stay.
practice that one for a little while, but I guess so. Yeah, me neither. Everybody sing along. I think they're doing that one later in the yeah, other room. Yeah, maybe that one later. Um, okay, let's good. try instead. Let's play um, Violet's Waltz. And we got to learn this one from our friend Violet Hensley, who's uh, a, real, a real treasure in Arkansas. She's 107 or 8 years old or something like that, and a uh, lifelong fiddler and fiddle maker and just all around interesting person. And uh, we, uh, we learned this from her. And I think that when she was a little girl, she had like an uncle type character that would sort of come in and out of the family unit and stay a while. And he was a, a good fiddler and brought a lot of tunes. And I think that's where she got this one. But it's called Violet's Waltz. <laughs> Don't forget to tip your dancers. Thank you. So this is, this is a really uh, a big treat and an honor for us to get to be here. You know, um, we're, we're, we're up here mainly doing the, uh, the Smithsonian Folk Festival, the Folk Life Festival, and uh, that's just, you know, a, kind of a, a lifelong honor for us to, to get to do something like that. And it's been a really... A cool experience for a lot of different ways. Um, one of the biggest things I've really enjoyed about about the festival so far is just how um, kind of broad and currently accurate a representation of the Ozarks is really present at the festival. You know, there's we've really gotten to enjoy uh, getting to know some of our neighbors in the area better while we're here. You know, the Marshallese community and the Hmong community. You can see I have a new bolo tie. I'm pretty proud of. This is a Marshallese bolo tie. And uh, so it's just been a real treat for us to get to, to know people better that are, that are living um, around the area we live in. And, uh, but uh, anyways, this next one we're gonna play is, is called McGraw's Ford, McGraw's Ford. And it's got two names, it's, got, it's called McGraw's Ford and it's also called Doc Brown's Dream. And the, the name, the way it got its name was uh, Doc Brown was a real a real person in history, somewhere back there around the turn of the century or something, he uh, 
He was a country doctor from Stratford, Missouri, and he had a bad problem of falling asleep at inopportune times. Um, I guess nowadays they would have probably diagnosed him with narcolepsy and maybe took his license away or something. But anyways, back then... The, his horse driving His license. horse driving <laughs> license, or maybe his medical practice license, one or the other. But uh, anyways, it, the story goes that he was off attending a birth on the far side of the James River late at night, and he was... Everything went good with the birth, you know, the baby happened, and he was on his way back home, and uh, he was in, the, in his buggy, you know, driving his horses, and I guess he fell asleep on the, the wrong side of the James River, and he woke up, and he'd forded the river in his sleep, and he'd gone across M McCraw's Ford, and anyways, James River's a pretty big, pretty big wild river there, you know, so it's kind of a wonder he made it across, but while he was sleeping across the river, he... Uh, this fiddle tune came to him, and he went, when he woke up on the other side of the river, he had this in his head, and he started playing it, and, uh, and that's how this tune came to be. And it's, I always kind of liked that story, thinking of old Doc Brown sleeping across the river, <laughs> playing the fiddle in his, in his dreams. Uh, now, I'm thinking maybe that horse that got him across the river in the sleep may have sung that tune to him. <laughs> yeah. The idea. Oh. Well, I asked that horse. <laughs> that was Ed. Was that his name? I don't know what the horse's name was. Nobody ever told the horse. Well, it was well, a pretty good credit. horse, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. should be named after the yeah. Okay, anyways, here we go. Macross Ford or Doc Brown's Dream. <laughs> That one's always funny to me because I've seen that, that movie, Back to the Future, and in that movie, Doc Brown uh, hits his head on a toilet or something and is unconscious, so it's a lot of similarities here, and invents the flux capacitor. Um, fiddle tune or flux capacitor, which one's better for humanity, Roy? It's hard to say. Fiddle tune, maybe. Yeah, so. fiddle tune. <laughs> flux capacitor. Huh. I have to try one of those sometimes. It sounds pretty good. Um, <laughs> Hey, why don't you play the Gastonia Gallop? Okie dokie. Here's a harmonica tune called the Gastonia Gallop. we 
tinnitus for the next couple of days. Don't worry, it'll, it'll pass. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play a tune called Sally Went A-Huntin'. And this is a tune, we really like this tune. This, we learned this from a friend of ours named Bill Conley at Mountain Grove, Missouri. And Bill's a great guitar player and fiddle player and banjo player, just all around. And uh, he's uh, he worked all his life in the milk plant there at Kabul. A lot of the fiddlers around that area, South Central Missouri, worked in the dairy industry. You know, drove a milk truck or work in the milk plant and stuff like that. And there's kind of a lot of a lot of interesting kind of stories that happen around that industry and stuff. And but uh, <clears throat> this tune came from Bill's grandpa whose name was By Connolly. I think that was short for Byron, maybe. But he was the blacksmith at the Rockbridge Mill, which was an old water wheel mill uh, in Missouri. It's really a historic mill, and he was, uh, he was, there's a lot of stories about him. But anyways, this one's called Sally Went A-Huntin'. And we'd like to send this out to, to several friends back home uh, in the Ozarks. We'd like to think of our good friend Kim Lansford, who's having uh, some health problems right now. And we'd also like to send this out as well to Andy and Janie Elder of Gainesville, Missouri. <laughs> play a, another tune that was that was commercially recorded back in I'd say maybe the 1930s by a, by a group in Arkansas called Pope's Arkansas Mountaineers and I uh, can't remember Pope's first name Pope was his last name but I don't think he played music at all I think that he owned like a successful furniture store or something and somehow like got the record deal and put his name on the record but the band was went unnamed but uh they, uh, this is, is kind of an interesting one that they used to play called George Washington.
was a local kid here, George. George Washington, yeah, yeah. he was a local guy, wasn't he? Yeah, w I was in a, a, a museum one time and uh, went through there and, and they had a skeleton of George Washington, it said. And the little kid says, well, uh, what's this other skeleton here? He says, well, that's George Washington when he was a kid. There's something fishy about that story. Clark. Sounds like time travel to me. The FBI Shuffling needs to look at that one. Flux capacitor. Uh, let's play. Uh, I think we got time for two more. Seems like. Let's play. Uh, let's play Woody's hornpipe. You want to play that one? I'll try my best. All righty. This is this is kind of a neat old fiddle tune. This is. I, I doubt you'd hear this outside of you know Arkansas and Missouri kind of area, and it's it's what they'd call crooked. You know, a fiddle tune can either be straight or crooked, and that refers to kind of the, the measures and the kind of the regularity of it. And this one's pretty irregular. It's kind of a crooked fiddle tune, but one thing I really love about the, the music and the dance tradition about where, where we're from is the, uh, the square dancing. It, it, it don't happen like you've seen it probably here, I don't think, where we've got one caller that's, that's calling the dance calls through the microphone or something, and, and all the, the different dancers are dancing the one dance. The way it works around home is that, uh, you know, the band will just start playing and then each set will just kind of form out on their own on the dance floor or kitchen or wherever they are, you know, and, and, uh, and each set will be dancing a different dance and the caller will be right in there in the set. And uh, so it doesn't matter so much how, if the tune is crooked or straight because just as long as you can, you know, pat your foot to it, it's, uh, you can dance to it. And, the dancers will start when they feel like it, and they'll quit when they feel like it. So uh, that's one thing I really like about the, the tradition around where we're from. But anyways, this one's called Woody's Hornpipe. This is another one from Skeeter Walden uh, from Bush, Arkansas. There it is. Hey, all these fiddle tunes kind of sound alike, you know what I mean? So it's, you've got to really work it, picking one out from the other. Okay, here we go. Woody's Hornpipe. <laughs>
And we do have a few CDs for sale at the back of this room on a little table on the left or right, wherever. Yeah, back there, you'll find us. <laughs> That's right. So thank you, everybody, so much for coming out and making us feel so welcome here in D.C. It's been such a treat to be here. And uh, we just really enjoyed it. So we're going to play one last tune real quick on our way out, and we will see you later on. This one's called Pike's Peak, which is it, it is actually an Ozark tune. It sounds like it'd be a you know Colorado right. tune, but it is it's from the Ozarks. So. <laughs> for joining us at Millennium Stage. For more information about upcoming shows, please check out the Kennedy Center website or Facebook page. At this time, we ask you to move to the back of the seating area so we can safely put away our chairs. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening at the Kennedy Center.